Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I want to talk to you about automatically applying checklists to your records and service now. In this video, I'm specifically going to show that on my personal visual task board that I use for making all of my videos and keeping up with the content. So you're getting behind the scenes, but you're also getting some service now goodness. I'm just going to open up one of these. This happens to be the content record for what I'm recording right now. And notice I've got a checklist over here on the right hand side that apparently is triggered by my shortcut for um, drawing on the screen. So that's the checklist. You can see I've got several things I need to do. There's about 30 things, 30 steps that I do to kind of put a video together. And um, I wanted to automatically apply this. I have another video, I'll link to it up above where I show, or that up above, yeah, over here, um, where I show how to automatically apply a tag to a visual task board card. And then I made the second leap, well, why not my checklist? Because I have to manually add this to every one. So I go up here and I add uh, or add a checklist. Let's pull up a blank one, here we go. I've got another video I haven't started yet for uh, Eaton. And I notice I have a content checklist, an Otterly Owlsome checklist, that's the podcast. If you haven't listened to it or watched it, you should check it out. And I have to apply it to every one so I don't forget the steps in my process for producing a video. So I wanted to do it automatically. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna create a new task here, um, a new content task. I'm gonna give it a, a just short description, demo for YouTube. And the, initially it's going to just grab the generic content uh, one and put that in there. So I have no idea where that went. Um, where to go? Why don't I see it? Let's scroll, scroll, scroll. I don't know where that went. That did not go anywhere for some reason. Let's, it's down here. Well, it couldn't be my complete list. Demo for YouTube. There it is. <laughs> it's in the open section. It got applied to open instead of work in progress. Okay, that was weird. But notice right there in the middle, the checklist has already been applied. That's because a flow ran in the background when that content task got created and went ahead and associated the list. Now, if I do the same thing, uh, let's do it over here under open since it seemed to like to be over there. I'm going to call this Otterly Allison Test, just like it was a podcast. And um, it's going to look for that. It's going to see that words or the words utterly awesome. And instead of doing the other one, it's going to put in uh, a different checklist. So there's the card right there. It's already showing on the screen. I don't see the checklist applied yet. I hope I did that correctly. I hope I wasn't supposed to have podcasts in there. Nope. There you go. You can see it. 34 items just got added. It even counted up while I was adding them there um, as the flow was adding those items to the checklist. And now I have a different checklist that includes all the steps I need to do for a podcast. So that is this time-saving feature there. Let me show you how I did that. Actually, before I show you how I did that, let's talk about checklists a little bit. So there's a couple of things you should know about how checklists are stored in the ServiceNow platform. I'm going to show you first the checklist template. So notice I have a template for my content and I have a checklist for Otterly Allison. Those are the two that I'm using all the time. The other things there are demo stuff. And if I go into one of those, those have all of the checklist items stored in a JSON format. So that's pretty handy and no, good to know that I can access that um, just by turning a JSON into a complex object. So there's the Otterly Allison checklist and it has all the steps I need to do. Now when you assign a checklist to um, a record in service now, it puts it on this table, checklist. Just like these, just like a sound. So it automatically creates a record here and links it to that document. In this case, those are those tasks that I just made. And in mine, on the flow, I have it naming it. Notice ServiceNow doesn't actually have anything in a name for a lot of these. Looks like they do for HR. I went ahead and said, hey, this is auto created by the flow, add checklist to VTP card. I put the date and time on there. I just thought that was cleaner than putting it empty, right? So it creates something in here. And then if you look, if you open up this, you'll see the checklist um, items that are related to it. So checklist underscore item is another table where it adds all those different checklist items from the JSON to the associate with the checklist. So it's a checklist table and checklist items is what's there. And then you can see the checklist items down below and they all have a name, whether they're completed or not, when they were completed, who completed them, and what order they're supposed to display in. Um, so the fields that are coming from that JSON are the name and the order. That's it. That's all that's in the JSON template in order to populate this. So we just need to reproduce that in Flow Designer and that's exactly what I did. So 
I've got a flow here, add checklist, a VTB card. It's going to trigger when a content task, that's a Justin table, it's not an out of the box table, when a task is created for my content that I'm creating for you all. So when that's created, it'll go ahead and run this flow. I don't need it to run when it's updated and I don't need it to run more than once. Otherwise I'm gonna have checklists that never finish. So I just need it to run one time and associate it with my content so I can check off all the things I need to do. Then it goes and creates the checklist record, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, hey, I need a checklist. I don't know the items yet because I don't know what kind of task Justin is working on. So we just create the checklist select record and then I do my check-in to see, hey, does that contain Otterly Allison in the short description? If it does, we look up the checklist template record for where the name is Otterly Allison checklist and then I have a custom action that's converting that templated JSON to a complex object. And that's the second thing I wanna show you here in Flow Designer. Um, so basically I have a custom action that receives the template string, the JSON string as an input, and then we have a JSON parser step that just puts it in the format. So if I kind of change this here, you can see it's gonna come with an owner, a name, and all the items, and within the items, you have one to N number of items in your checklist, and each one of those has a name and a number for the order. So all you do is make sure that that is dropped in here, so we're just grabbing that input from here, checklist template as our source data. And then I had, I copy and pasted the, um, the if you go back here to the, let's see here, if I go to the checklist templates, uh, Otterly Allison checklist template, I just copied one of these, copy and paste it over here into this field, this right here, you can hit generate target and it'll generate this object over here. And you probably wanna look at the object, make sure it looks okay, hit exit, and that's it. We've got our object at the very end of the action. I'm gonna assign the variable checklist object, which is an array of objects. I'm gonna assign that to what just came out of that step number one for the number of items that came out of that JSON template. So that's what's happening there. It's essentially taking a string of text and turning it into a complex object that Flow Designer can then loop through, and that's the second part here. So once we've converted it, that's this step number four, then I'm gonna loop through it with a for each, and I'm gonna create the checklist item records for each one of those items, each one of those objects in the array of objects that we got from that convert JSON to complex object. So it's essentially rebuilding the checklist. And that's why when you saw when I created it, it counted up the number, right? Because it's going through the for loop. It's going, here's the first one, here's the second one, here's the third one, here's the fourth one, here's the fifth one, here's the sixth one. All right, so that's the first part. If it's the Otterly Allison podcast. If it's not the Otterly Allison podcast, if it's anything else, I basically say, go look up the generic content checklist. Name is content checklist. Do the same thing. We're gonna convert that template into a complex object from JSON. And then we're gonna loop through every single one of those and create a checklist item and associate it with that checklist. So if I open up with this one here, I didn't open up the previous one, you can see when I'm creating a checklist item, I'm associating the checklist that I created in step number one, that's up here, create checklist record. So I'm associating with that checklist, I'm making sure complete is set to false, I'm setting the name to the name field that came back from that complex object, and I'm setting the order to the order field. Super, super simple, um, but it saves me a couple of clicks when I'm creating content records in my visual task board in ServiceNow so again, it's just as easy as adding something to my list. We'll go back here to my visual task board, showing all of my content tasks grouped by state. And just for fun, I'm gonna create one more so you can see that happen. I wish it does, I hope it does it live like it did the first time we did it. We'll just give it a short description, last demo for the YouTube, and I'll hit submit and we should see it there. And I'm just gonna highlight it in green. There you can see it's building up as I'm talking, adding all 29 items to the checklist. It's been saving me some steps. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in using ServiceNow to automate things in ServiceNow. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.